The following programming is EI, educational and informative. Today on Mystery Hunters. We're investigating death defiers. People have died and come back to life. But can they tell us what's on the other side? Suddenly I found myself out of my body. I meet someone who's been there and come back to tell about it. And I unlock the secrets of one of the greatest escape artists of all time, Houdini. He was a death defier who performed tricks for the public that would have killed any normal human being. But then he did die mysteriously. I investigate the secret world of Houdini. And Doubting Dave shows you a seriously cool way to pull a Houdini of your own. Uh-oh. This, this is, is Mystery, Mystery Hunters. Hunters. We'll be right back with more Mystery Hunters. We now return to Mystery Hunters. Hey, what's up? I'm definitely on to something right now. Can you pass me that book? Yeah, sure. Whoa. Sorry. That was close. Did you think you are about to die? No. But you know, there are people who say that they've died and then they come back to tell about it. It's called a near-death experience, and dozens of people all over the world have reported having this happen to them. I'm on my way to talk to one of them. I'm about to meet with Gilles Bédard. He's someone who died, then came back to life. Can he tell me what it's like to be dead? Gilles, can you tell me what happened in that hospital room? When I was 19, I've been very sick. Gilles got a rare disease that made him so sick that he was in a coma. He couldn't wake up. And in fact, what was happening, so I was, uh, was dying. That night, the doctor came in to examine him. And so he turned me on my back. Gilles was dying, and the doctors gave Gilles' parents the bad news. But though Gilles couldn't talk, he could feel something strange happening. Suddenly, I found myself out of my body. And I was watching the scene, seeing my body, the doctor, the family around me, and I could see they were very sad, you know. So you were in the bed and in the corner of the room? Yeah, at the same time. And then suddenly it was like all the walls disappeared. I found myself in a huge room, and in the back of it, there was a huge bright light, like a sun. And then suddenly I asked in my mind what's happening. And the light answered me, you're not gonna die. And I found myself back into my body. Just right away? Right away, like now. Getting a book dropped on my head was as close to a near-death experience as I want to have. But I wonder if there's any other way to leave your body. Search. It seems like there's a technique called astral projection used by witches and psychics to let their spirits leave their bodies, just like Gilles did. Are you really a witch? Well, you could call me that. So what is astral projection? Exactly what happens? Well, it is your spirit body that leaves your physical body. And then right away, you instantaneously go anywhere you think you want to go. Maybe I can go to the place where Gilles went. Can you teach me how to astral project? I can teach you to teach yourself. Am I about to have a near-death experience? These stamps hold a secret about a man whose life was full of secrets. His name? Harry Houdini. But this viewer can see hidden things. Just look. Why the chains? Because escaping from chains like these was his job. He was the greatest escape artist of all time. Houdini did amazing tricks for the public that involved escaping from the most incredible contraptions ever. I mean, many people thought that he must have supernatural powers. But then, something happened. Houdini had always said that his special skills allowed him to withstand a punch in the stomach from anyone. It happened after one of his shows. Someone asked him if they could try punching him, and he agreed. Except the person punched him when he wasn't ready, and it seemed to hurt him very badly. A few days later, he died. 
Could a simple punch in the stomach really have killed the world's greatest death defier? To try to find out, I'm meeting Dean Gunnarsson. He's the greatest living escape artist. Now, if he can do the same tricks as Houdini, he may know Houdini's secrets. Hello, is anybody here? My name's Araya. I'm, I'm with Mystery Hunters. Hello, Araya. Uh, hi. I'm here to find out about Houdini, how he died. Ah, uh, yes. Houdini. You know, he was very interested in death, not only in defying it, but what happened to people after they died. He even hired psychics to help him talk to the spirit of his dead mother. Do you, do you think that his interest in spirits could have something to do with the mystery of his death? Why don't we ask him? Okay. Mariah, have a seat. This is Houdini's personal diary. It will tell us everything that happened to Houdini on that fateful day, 1926, in Montreal. We'll have to find another way. I have these chalkboards that were found in Houdini's attic. Please take that piece of chalk and place it in between the empty chalkboards. Spirits come to us. Did you feel that? A message. H H H. Harry Houdini. Please, Houdini, if you are with us, please give us one last great sign. I found this book on escape magic, and I'm trying to learn some of the tricks before any magicians realize I have it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh-oh. I guess if you want to learn how to become an escape artist, you should start small. So why don't we watch this cool way to make it look like you can escape from something? And you don't need chains to do it. All you need for your escape is a piece of rope that's twice as long as your arm. It's also more fun if you do this in front of an audience. First, hold your left hand palm up in front of you. Then wrap the rope around your left wrist twice like this. Next, put your right wrist on your left wrist like this. Then turn both hands over quickly so the ends of the rope fall on either side of your right wrist. Have someone tie the ends together so your hands can't move. And you're ready for your escape. Ask an audience member to time you. Then step into another room and close the door. Once you're there, make noises like you're struggling. Building dramatic tension in your audience. Then twist both hands like this, which will open a big loop so you can take your right hand out and pull the rope off your left wrist. Believe it or not, Houdini could escape from a lot of things just as fast, but he usually pretended it took longer to make his performances more suspenseful. Come back out holding the rope, take your bow, and the audience will think you're a master escape artist. Just remember, the escapes that real magicians perform take years of practice. And between you and me, they don't like it when people try to make what they do look easy. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be right back with more Mystery Hunters. We now return to Mystery Hunters. Investigating near-death experiences. That's when people who may have been dead for a few seconds come back to life. Some of them say that while they were dead, they felt their spirits travel to a different world. Suddenly, I found myself out of my body. Is there a way for me to visit that world, but without dying? You instantaneously go anywhere you think you want to go. I met a modern-day witch who told me that astral projection might just be the way. And now, I'm about to try it. I just hope that when my spirit leaves my body, it can find its way back. 
Misty is showing me how to concentrate in a way that she says will allow my spirit to leave my body. Just hover around us. And if you succeed, don't go too far. Stay here. Okay. <laughs> the idea is to relax my body enough for my spirit to get out and fly somewhere else. As a matter of fact, I am starting to feel a bit strange. I'm really dizzy. Am I on my way to the spirit world? On stage, Harry Houdini defied death with his tricks. Off stage, he defied it with the help of psychics. Now that he's gone, can he defy death one last time and talk to me? Oh, what's going on here? Is Houdini doing this? What made you think Houdini was doing this? The table was just floating by itself. I saw it. Ah. Uh, things aren't always what they seem. Rulers. And you move the table with rulers tucked under your wristwatch. And the slates. They must have a secret compartment. And what about the book? Uriah, can you keep a secret? Yeah. Your magic is magic. Man, I have to admit, I, I really fell for that. But I guess that means that Houdini can't help me out after all. He just did. Houdini really was interested in communicating with the dead, but he wanted real answers. And he found that most people that claimed they could do so were actually phonies. At the time, there were a lot of phony psychics who got people to give them money by promising they could contact their dead relatives when they were really just doing the kinds of tricks that Dean just showed me. Houdini exposed a lot of them, like this one where he showed how a psychic would make a bell ring with her toe and say it was a ghost. And that got some people really mad at Harry Houdini. Do you think that one of the people he exposed may have harmed him? Maybe they interfered with one of his shows and, you know, caused him an injury that ended up killing him. I mean, I need to find out just how dangerous Houdini's tricks really were. I got a good idea. It's almost time for my performance. Why don't you come up and watch, and I will show you one of Houdini's greatest escapes. Up close. All right. Tonight, I will attempt one of Houdini's most difficult and dangerous escapes, the Houdini underwater milk can. All right, I said I need you up close. Tonight, you will be my personal assistant. These are the handcuffs and locks that will bind me. Please lock them on very tightly. Are you ready? I'm ready. can only hold his breath for two minutes. Longer than that, and they'll have to let him out. One minute. That's it. It's almost two minutes. I guess he can't do it. Let's let him out. Yeah, I got these. I got these. Here. Give him more time. Give him more time. But... The curtain. Pull it up. Now. That's it. Two minutes. If he's gonna escape, it's got to be now. How did you do that? Sierra, that was one of Houdini's greatest escapes. <laughs> well, yeah. Where'd he go? Now I can really see just how dangerous Houdini's escapes were. You'd have to be in amazing shape to do a trick like that. That makes it even harder to believe that a simple punch could have killed him. Mm, hey, Dean, I guess you're not going to tell me how you did that. But could you at least tell me what I need to know about Houdini? I think you have all the information you need. Maybe you just need to take it to the right person. Dr. Gitilescu. Hi, Araya. Hey, some of the maintenance guys told me they've been seeing strange things down here. Yeah. I guess that's what it feels like to have an out-of-body experience. <laughs> Maybe I should come back when I'm less jumpy. Oh, you got mail. I almost forgot. 
12-year-old Terry Smith emailed me about something even stranger than near-death experiences. A no-death experience. Up. Take a look on the Mystery Illustrated. Dear Doubting Dave, I went to the Fountain of Youth National Park in Florida and took a drink of water from the Eternal Spring. I know it's not real, but it made me wonder, why don't people live forever? Yeah. Well, Terry, where did this come from? People have changed a lot since we first became people. 50,000 years ago, we were shorter, hairier, and much more primitive. But as each generation gave way to the next, we evolved from this into this. If people lived forever, that wouldn't have happened. Because evolution takes place over many generations. So for new and improved creatures to evolve, the old ones have to get out of the way. It's the same with every species on Earth. Except maybe one. Scientists think that lobsters can live for as long as they aren't injured or eaten. That means that out in the ocean, there could be some seriously old lobsters crawling around. And according to the fossils we found, lobsters haven't changed much in a hundred million years. So, Terry, if people were like lobsters, we wouldn't have changed much either. And that's why we don't live forever. We're made that way for the species to keep getting better. Yay! You're the one who's scaring people down here. Ah. Forget about living forever. With friends like this, you might not make it to next week. We'll be right back with more Mystery Hunters. We now return to Mystery Hunters. I met someone who died but came back to life. Suddenly, I found myself out of my body. Gilles said he experienced a trip to another world. I'm trying to visit that world myself in a different way. Can you teach me how to astral project? Well, I can teach you to teach yourself. Astral projection, a technique that's supposed to allow your spirit to leave your body. Can I use it to visit the world of the dead? I'm using the techniques that Misty taught me to concentrate and see if I can get my spirit to leave my body. But I have to admit, I'm kind of scaring myself. I felt like you were, you were, you were, you were further away than, than you, than you actually, I knew that you were right here. Is it? I feel sick. You're supposed I feel nauseous. I had to come out of it because I felt, I felt really sick. And then actually I got sick. I had to go to the bathroom. I was, I was scared. I was totally scared of, of that experience. But I did feel something and, and what it was, I don't know. Did my spirit start to leave my body? Or did I just scare myself half to death? Either way, I've got to try something else. I'm going to meet someone who's had a different kind of near-death experience. Paramedics go to the scene of accidents. It's their job to help people who are dying. How does a body die? Well, Christina, the heart can stop or someone can stop breathing. Then, of course, there wouldn't be any oxygen to the brain. Usually, you would say someone's dead if that happens. As a paramedic, what would you do when this happened? Well, we could do CPR. I'll show you. One. If someone's heart starts beating again within 10 minutes, then they haven't really died because their brain is still alive. I need to talk to a brain expert about this. When somebody has a near-death experience, weird and complex things happen in the brain. One of the first things that happens is that the blood supply and the oxygen supply to the brain changes in a dramatic way. As a result, the brain does not function in its usual self. Could that cause someone to imagine things that seem to be really real? Absolutely. It usually happens when people lie down on their backs. And so you turn me on my back. The blood drains to the back of the head. The back of the head is the visual area of the brain. So as a result of this draining of the blood, we sort of feel that we're losing vision and instead we just see a big light. And then suddenly there was a huge bright light like a sun. It's just something that is happening in the brain as, it's, as it loses power. It doesn't mean that these experiences are not true. It just means that these experiences are inside your head and not necessarily out there in the real world. So it's possible that 
people are seeing some sort of life after death. But it's also possible that it's happening in the brain and not out in the spirit world. But for me, I think there's enough mysteries in this world to uncover. Like, why is Araya such a klutz? <laughs> Harry Houdini defied death a hundred different ways. And he had to be incredibly strong to do what he did. So how could a simple punch have killed him? Well, just before Houdini died, he was suffering from severe stomach cramps on his lower right side, and he had a, a high fever of 102. What do you think that could have been? That definitely could have been appendicitis, which normally shows up with pains on the right side of the belly, the lower right side, and with a high fever. Well, part of Houdini's act was that he would ask audience members to come and punch him in the stomach. Do you think that could have made it worse? If he'd had appendicitis for a few days before he was punched, the body would have had time to make an abscess around the appendix, which is a pocket of pus, and a strong punch could have made that blow up. The infection would have spread in his entire abdomen, and he would have become very sick from it. It turns out that before he died, Houdini had a really serious illness, and people said he refused to stop working or take a break to see a doctor. Now, the punch may have made his condition worse or even caused a rupture, but it wasn't the cause of death. Houdini died simply because he was very sick. Now, I don't want to figure out how Dean did that crazy voice thing inside the milk can. Give him more time. Got it. Put me down. Okay. You know, I think some secrets don't need to be revealed. <laughs> hey, Araya. Hey. So did you learn any tricks from Houdini? No. But it does seem like he could escape from anything. You know, he even escaped from a giant paper bag once without making a single tear in it. Well, I mean, hey, that's the reason why he's one of the greatest escape artists. I guess. <laughs> So... This is MeTV, Providence, New Bedford's home for memorable entertainment.